the DC-10 Aircraft Review. Let's start our review with normal arrival and departure procedures. Standard operating procedure requires that the first step in any door operation is to verify the status of your door. The CSD will instruct the flight attendants to disarm when the fasten seatbelt sign has been extinguished. To disarm doors 1L and 1R, move the arming lever to the disarmed position and engage the safety latch. Verify the door is disarmed by checking the girt bar lockdown indicators are blank, the door electrical control switches are illuminated, and the arming lever points to the slide disarmed placard. To disarm doors 2, 3, and 4, move the arming lever to the disarmed position and engage the safety latch. Verify the door is disarmed by checking that the girt bar lockdown indicators are blank, the door electrical control switches are illuminated, and the slide mode window reads disarmed. Walk to the opposite door and verify it is disarmed. Confirm to the CSD that your door is disarmed and cross-checked. After verifying your door is disarmed, assess outside conditions to ensure it is safe to continue. Then stand clear of the door and raise the plastic guard covering the up electrical control switch. Press and hold the switch until the door is open. The captain will give permission to close the doors. Stand well clear of the door and raise the plastic guard covering the down electrical control switch. Press and hold the switch until the door is locked. Then attach the attendant barrier strap. When the bridge starts to retract, the CSD will instruct the flight attendants to arm the doors. Release the safety latch on the arming lever and move the arming lever to the armed position. Verify the door is armed by checking the girt bar lockdown indicators are armed. The door electrical control switches are extinguished and the arming lever points to the slide armed placard. Release the safety latch on the arming lever and move the arming lever to the armed position. Verify the door is armed by checking the girt bar lockdown indicators are armed. The door electrical control switches are extinguished and the slide mode window reads armed. For both types of doors, walk to the opposite door and verify it is armed. Confirm to the CSD that your door is armed and cross-checked. Now let's look at the location of emergency and safety equipment. We'll begin on the flight deck. Here you'll find a halon extinguisher and a fire crash axe. There is a portable oxygen bottle with smoke mask. In the upper compartment is a search mirror and protective gloves. There are also smoke goggles adjacent to each flight deck seat. For security purposes, there is a restraint kit containing scissors, tape, handcuffs, and rope. At each crew seat, there is a life vest. In the compartment at 1L, there is a halon extinguisher. In the compartment behind the jump seat, there are two portable oxygen bottles. In the first overhead bin on the left, you will find a megaphone and a radio beacon. At 2L, located in the left side of the business galley, in the lower compartment there are two first aid kits and eight infant life vests. In the doghouse at 2L, there are two portable oxygen bottles. There is also a halon extinguisher. At 3L, in the doghouse, there are two portable oxygen bottles. Between doors 3L and 3R, there is a closet with an equipment stowage area.
Inside on the left, you will find an emergency medical kit, a first aid kit, two portable oxygen bottles, and the portable oxygen bottle restraint pouch. To the left is a cupboard containing six infant life vests. On the right side, there are two portable oxygen bottles, a first aid kit, and a water extinguisher. At 4L, behind the last row of seats in the center pull-out drawer, there is a halon extinguisher and a portable oxygen bottle. There are also eight infant life vests. In the last left overhead bin, you will find a megaphone and a radio beacon. Stowed beneath the last row of passenger seats left side, there is a physician's kit. Mounted on the wall in the aft galley, there are two more portable oxygen bottles. There is a water extinguisher mounted on the right side forward face of the business class galley. At 2R, in the jump seat doghouse, there are two portable oxygen bottles, one of which has a full face smoke mask. At the 3R jump seat in the doghouse, there are two portable oxygen bottles. At 4R, behind the last row of center seats in the center pullout drawer, there is a water extinguisher. There is also a portable oxygen bottle with full face smoke mask. At each jump seat, there is a flashlight and a crew life vest. Now let's look at the oxygen systems on the DC-10. The flight deck masks are clipped to hooks adjacent to each seat and are in plain view. Pull the harness on from the back of your head forward, ensuring the mask covers your nose and mouth. The passenger cabin of the DC-10 is equipped with chemical oxygen generators. Pulling on one mask releases a pin, which activates the generator to allow the flow of oxygen to all masks attached to that unit. Once started, the flow will last for approximately 12 minutes and cannot be shut off. Oxygen flow is confirmed when the indicator bar on the breather bag inflates. If a bulkhead oxygen compartment fails to open, it can be opened by sticking a sharp object into the hole and applying pressure. This also applies to the flight attendant jump seat and lavatory units. To release the unit at the passenger seats, locate the button in the back of the seat under the lowered table tray and press it. Or find the latch in the seat ahead and move it sideways. For flight attendants to contact the flight deck in an emergency, pick up the handset. Press the pilot switch at least five times. Press and hold the push to talk bar while speaking. Indications on the flight deck of this call are a series of at least five chimes. There is an evacuation signal system panel on the flight deck at 1L, 2L, and 4L. In the cabin, the system can only be activated at 2L. To initiate an evacuation at 2L, lift the plastic guard and move the toggle switch up to on. This will sound the horns at 1L, 4L and on the flight deck. Upon hearing the signal, silence the horn and conduct the evacuation. To open the door with slide wrapped inflation, assess outside conditions, verify the door is armed, and rotate the door handle up to the open position. Slide wrapped inflation is complete in approximately 10 seconds. If the slide fails to inflate, hold on and pull the manual inflation handle. Then step into your protected position. To open the door with slide raft inflation, assess outside conditions. Verify the door is armed and rotate the handle up to the open position. Slide wrapped inflation is complete in approximately 10 seconds. If the slide fails to inflate, hold on 
and pull the manual inflation handle. Then step into your protected position. At doors three, visually check to ensure the slide raft has inflated by looking forward outside the aircraft for the luminous patches on the upper buoyancy tubes of the slide raft. If the ODI is not visible, command two passengers to hold passengers back while you run to the end of the ramp. Pull the second manual inflation handle on the slide raft apron, then run back to conduct the evacuation from inside the aircraft. If you are unable to return to the aircraft, conduct the evacuation from the sentry box at the end of the ramp. Return to the aircraft as soon as practical. To open the door without slide raft inflation, assess outside conditions. Move the arming lever past disarm to the override position and hold. Then rotate the door handle up to the open position. To open the door without slide raft inflation, assess outside conditions. Move the arming lever past disarm to the override position and hold. Then rotate the door handle up to the open position. Although highly unlikely, it may be necessary to evacuate through the flight deck windows. To open the window, push the handle down and rotate it to unlock the window. Push the crank handle in to engage and turn to open. To evacuate, use the escape rope located in the ceiling. Throw this overboard and climb down. All exits may be used in a land evacuation. The responsibilities of the captain, first officer, and second officer include completing the abnormal and emergency checklist, giving the evacuation signal, assisting with the evacuation as required, and evacuating through the flight deck windows if necessary. Position 1L, the CSD, sits at the jump seat at 1L. If necessary, 1L will activate the emergency light switch, which illuminates the emergency lighting system. 1L will assess and open 1L, conduct an evacuation, and must also check the condition of the flight deck crew. 1L will evacuate themselves after removing the forward megaphone and radio beacon. Position 2L sits at the aft-facing jump seat at 2L. 2L will assess and open 2L and conduct an evacuation through 2L. 2L will evacuate themselves after removing the first aid kit. Position 2LA sits at the forward facing jump seat at 2L. 2LA will assist with the evacuation as required. Position 3L sits at the jump seat at 3L. 3L will assess and open 3L and conduct an evacuation there. 3L will evacuate themselves after removing the first aid kit and the emergency medical kit. Position 4L sits at the jump seat at 4L. 4L will assess and open 4L and conduct an evacuation there. 4L will evacuate themselves after removing the aft megaphone and radio beacon. Position 1R sits at the jump seat at 1R. 1R will assess and open 1R and conduct an evacuation through 1R. Position 2R sits at the aft facing jump seat at 2R. 2R will assess and open 2R and conduct an evacuation there. 2R will evacuate themselves after removing a first aid kit. Position 3R sits at the jump seat at 3R. 3R will assess and open 3R and conduct an evacuation through 3R. 3R will evacuate themselves after removing a first aid kit. Position 4R sits at the forward facing jump seat at 4R. 4R will assess and open 4R and will conduct an evacuation there. It is the responsibility of each crew member to remove their flashlight when necessary and do a thorough cabin check before evacuating.
All exits may be used in a water evacuation. All crew members and passengers will don a life vest. Once the water evacuation is complete, crew members will inflate their own life vests and board the slide raft. Next, detach the slide raft from the aircraft. To detach the slide raft from the aircraft, brace yourself by holding onto the slide raft while kneeling well back from the door sill. Lift the flap on the girt apron. Pull the quick release handle. As the slide raft detaches from the girt bar, it will drop to the water level. It is still tethered to the aircraft by a mooring line. Disconnect the mooring line by cutting it with the knife. Now, inflate the girt bar end section of the raft. Lift the flap on the upper buoyancy tube and pull down sharply on the cloth handle. Next, you erect the canopy. To erect the canopy, unsnap and unfold the canopy halves from each side of the upper buoyancy tubes. Buckle the two halves together in the center. Orally inflate the center support tubes and position them on the floor lane divider. Then, secure the canopy ties at each end of the slide raft. This completes the visual DC-10 aircraft review.